power. In plants like this, electrical energy is generated. Properly harnessed, power is a vital servant of mankind, but it can also cause injury or death. His occupation is dangerous, but he has been trained to do his job safely and well. He knows too that when power suppliers erect high voltage distribution structures, public safety is a major consideration. However, this lineman and the whole electrical power industry are concerned because so few people realize the potential electrical hazards which exist along every street and highway. In fact, even a lineman's own family does not always understand the danger. For example, see that boy on the ladder? He's our lineman's son, Bill. But what's he doing on that ladder? Wow, looks like he's been trying to get that kite out of the wires. His pop's mad, and he has every reason to be. One wrong move in untangling that kite, and Bill would have been severely burned or even electrocuted. When something like this happens, call your electrical supplier, who is always ready to help you safely. This situation turned out okay, but look what can happen. Here is a mock-up of a high-voltage line. It consists of transformers, circuit breakers, fuses, insulators, and conductors which might be located at various points along any highway. This transformer is similar to the large transformers in substations. Here's one that steps up voltage from 120 volts to 7200 volts, so current may be transmitted longer distances. This is an oil circuit breaker, and here is a fuse cutout. This oil circuit breaker is a newer, more automatic device, although both circuit breakers do the same job as the fuses or circuit breakers in your home. Remember this pole? Well, here's a demonstration pole which is similar. On it, a high-voltage fuse cutout is used to protect this transformer, which reduces the voltage from 7200 volts to the 120 volts used in your home. Even though high-tension wires are insulated, a moist or dirty kite string can become dangerous. For instance, by opening the fuse cutout and bypassing it with a kite string, it's possible to light a 200-watt light bulb before the string burns. This is enough current to kill. Flying a kite is in many ways like flying an airplane. A good pilot always checks the wind direction and obstructions before takeoff. Be a good pilot when you fly your kite. Today, Bill has a chance to go out on the job with his dad's service crew. Dad is a journeyman lineman, and he secured permission to take Bill with him. The first job order calls for a new service installation. But wait, a radio message from the dispatcher directs the crew to check and take care of a line outage in the immediate vicinity. These service interruptions just don't happen. So it's the lineman's job to find and correct the trouble, thus restoring service to the consumers.
The first step is to check the fuses on the circuit that is out. Bill's dad knows the location of these fuses by heart. This fuse has blown. He may find that all he has to do is replace it and service is restored. But the new fuse blows instantly, indicating that there's a short circuit somewhere on this section of the line. Truck 4 to Menominee. The switch does not hold. N4, KSB 910, clear. <laughs> it may be necessary to patrol miles of line before the crew finds the trouble. And here's the trouble. These farmers evidently forgot that there was a power line next to the tree. Now the line is down, cutting off service to several neighbors on this circuit. These men were lucky they weren't touching the tree when it fell on the high tension line, or they might have been burned or electrocuted. Bill's dad needs a rope. By placing a protective ground across the line circuit, the work area is made safe. This man should have called his power supplier who would have gladly helped him remove the tree safely. Sap and moisture make trees good conductors of electricity. And of course, the larger the limb, the more moisture it holds and the better conductor it becomes. The fallen tree carried high voltage to the ground where it endangered the lives of the men doing the cutting. How much current is carried by a tree or limb is hard to determine, but current necessary to light a 15 watt lamp is sufficient to kill you. By opening the cutout or fuse and then placing a limb across the wires, the circuit is completed through the branch. Contact between limb and wires causes the 200 watt lamp to burn brightly, conducting 10 times more current than is necessary to kill you. This branch is carrying current from a live wire to a supposedly dead line. However, no lineman trusts an open switch because unless he guards himself by placing protective grounds on both sides of the work area, he could be electrocuted. In this case, the limb is conducting the current but because the protective ground is in place, the lamp does not light. The protective grounds have now been removed and the lineman is ready to leave. The farmers have been able to complete their work, but the line crew must still return to the pole where the fuse cutout is located and replace the blown fuse before service is restored. It's noon now, and time for a bite of lunch. But not everyone is eating. This thoughtless hunter has just created an outage for a homemaker whose housework has been interrupted. She discovers her neighbor's electrical service is also out. Besides the inconvenience, there's danger of spoiled food, lack of fire protection, and no power for operating other essential farm equipment. Nominated truck four. Check outage on C4 line. <laughs> After a quick patrol of the circuit, which the radio reported as being out, the service crew spots the trouble. This sagging line and broken insulator. When the insulator was broken, the line fell down against the pole causing the short circuit which disrupted service. Truck four to Menominee and found the trouble. The hanging line touching the pole makes the pole hot and a potential hazard to anyone like these boys who might touch it. Insulators keep the high voltage line away from the pole. They are designed to insulate the high voltage current from the pole in all kinds of weather. When the insulator is broken, moisture conducts the current into the pole, 
often setting it afire. Such fires can cause the conductors to burn and fall to the ground. With the emergency calls out of the way, the service crew has finally completed the day's work orders. Looks like he's alive, maybe just dazed. When the car broke off the pole, the hot wire carrying 7,200 volts dropped onto the roof, electrically charging the entire car. He's safe as long as he remains in the car because his body does not complete a circuit to the ground. The two-way radio really pays off here. The dispatcher at headquarters immediately calls an ambulance, the power company whose lines are down, and the state traffic patrol who must investigate the accident. The power company will immediately dispatch its nearest service crew to cut the power. Power suppliers are noted for their cooperation when safety is involved. Brownie, take car 150. Car 150, go ahead. Car 150. Property damage accident, one mile north, junction 29 and 12. 10 4. Hold it, mister. Your life depends on your staying in that car. He's lucky these linemen happen to come along. Inexperienced persons trying to help are often injured or killed because they do not understand the potential danger to themselves. Continuing contact by radio is essential, and the power company's crew arrives only a few minutes after being directed to the scene of the accident. Such emergency crews are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The job is in good hands. Automobiles, when they become electrically charged or hot, are not dangerous to the person inside unless he completes a circuit with the ground while stepping out of the car. The current hasn't been turned on yet. Here the car is being charged with 7200 volts. Now look what happens when the circuit is completed. The human body conducts electricity just like this wire. If, in case of fire, a person must leave an electrically charged car, he should jump entirely clear of the vehicle and any live wires. Now let's go back over some of the hazards we've seen today. Don't fly kites near high voltage lines or other power facilities. A kite string can conduct enough current to injure or kill you. Check with your power supplier before trimming or felling trees near electric lines. Trees, limbs, leaves, and damp wood conduct sufficient current to be extremely dangerous. Insulators have a purpose. To destroy them is to endanger human lives. Stay in the car. Wait until experienced help arrives. Don't you become a headline.